Sing with us number 457, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, 457 in the hymnals. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Certainly welcome as we gather for Mass today. So now we enter into ordinary time. Today in the Gospel we hear the first public miracle, Jesus changes the water into wine. So we seek the abundance of God's blessing and grace upon us as we join in our worship today. We prepare by calling to mind our sin. We ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life and to spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. Let us pray. 
almighty and ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken, or your land desolate, but you shall be, call, be called my delight, and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the spirit, the expression of wisdom to another the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, 
to another, discernment of spirits, to another, variety of tongues, to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had been become wine without knowing where it come from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called to the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drank, drunk it freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Certainly welcome to everyone. Welcome to the Feast of Miracles, where Jesus turned the wine into his blood. As we come together for this Holy Mass, I want to encourage all to love Jesus and to love one another. The joy of Christ awaits us all now and forever, no matter what the world is like, God has petitioned all of us with his holy power to make a better world, each and every one of us has gifts and the power of God in us. Jesus shows us that through the obedience to God, great things can happen. God gives us all gifts, and he also gives us an opportunity to use these gifts. Are we using them? No matter how bad the world seems, 
God really wants us to know how much he loves us and how much he wants to serve us. God also wants us to love him and to serve him. Many hands do great work. There is a great marriage being celebrated today. Are we too busy complaining to accept being married to our builder? In the first reading, we see God trying to make the people feel loved again. The people were complaining and belly aching that God wanted them to know he was not giving up on them. Things were bad. The world was in kind of turmoil. The people were complaining and belly aching, and God wanted them to know that he was there always for them, and he would not give up on them. God assures us that if we accept him, that he will build this marriage with us for eternity. In the second reading, we hear about some so-called gifts. A lot of us have heard these gifts before. Some of us have not. We all need to study them and think about them. I would reference these gifts to building blocks that the builder uses through the Spirit to build our marriage with him and with all. There are many gifts given to everyone for their benefit to use when they need them. Sometimes we don't know that we possess these gifts. But when the time comes, God shows them to us. Talents and gifts are two different things, but both of them can be used to build your marriage with God and all the people. Are you using your gifts and talents to help all to the journey to the kingdom of God? Or are you just complaining about things and not fixing them, not helping? It's a tough question. So then we come to the gospel and we hear about Jesus, the gift builder, the miracle worker, the salvation giver. I was really impressed, or excuse me, I was really intrigued by Jesus' response to Mary when she asked him to do something about the wine shortage. He seemed reluctant, but Jesus knew that it was not time to turn the wine into blood because he knew what that story entailed. Maybe he was a little confused at first, but I'm sure he figured it out and was obedient to his mother. I liken that to us when we see something in the world that lacks and we see, we just start complaining to everyone about it. We see something that somebody does wrong or says something wrong and we just complain about it. But Jesus uses his gifts to show the power of God, to unite them and us in marriage, and to give us great hope for eternal salvation. I remember when I was about 29 years old, and I was talking to my dad, and yes, I was complaining and belly aching, and I was telling my dad that I just didn't think it was right that everybody was giving up on the teenagers and nobody would help them. And 
they're all complaining. Everybody's complaining about our teenagers nowadays, and nobody's reaching out and trying to help them or anything. Well, I was kind of surprised at the response. My father got red in the face, as I do when I get mad. And he looked at me and he says, I don't want to hear another word. You have all the gifts and all the talent to do something about this. You have no right to complain. When you have done everything possible in your power to fix this situation, then you can come and complain to me. But I still don't want to hear it. <laughs> and I thought that that was a shock to me. Um, but I got on the phone the next day, and I called the school, and I got involved. I called, and, and I got involved right away um, with coaching wrestling. And to this day, I still try to help out when I can. I go to Hicksville, and I um, go to practice and talk about God. And I'm also involved at Wayne Trace. I'm, after this Mass, I'm going to a tournament in Wayne Trace, and I help coach the little kids. But see, I knew I had a talent. I knew what my talent was. I knew how to wrestle. And I knew I had this talent. But I didn't know that much about my gifts. I didn't know that God was going to equip me with everything else. But I found out as I was coaching about these gifts, and he gives us the, the avenue. He gives us these things, the power to do these things. Even though we're so reluctant to do them, when we find ourselves, when we jump into it, we find ourselves capable. Even though when we're sitting there, we don't think we are. God gives us the power, the gifts, and the talent. The joy of Christ awaits us now and forever. No matter what the world is like, God has petitioned each and every one of us with his power to make this a better world. Jesus shows us through his obedience, excuse me, okay, now I need everyone to, to kind of listen for a second, because I hear in the churches, I hear a lot of complaining. And I hear a lot of complaining about how we foster our youth in the church and in the world. And I hear a lot about complaining about the COVID and the vaccine. And I hear a lot of complaining about a lot of things. Because I'll be honest with you, there's probably a lot to complain about. What are we doing? What are we doing to help? Are we helping? Or are we hurting the cause? I thank God and Jesus that God, uh, Jesus did not say, I don't have time when it came time to change the water into wine. Or we may never have seen the real miracle when he changes the wine into blood and the whole story that goes with that. Is there something in the church or outside the church that we can do to help our builder God construct a marriage between Jesus and all that will be strong so no evil can penetrate it? No matter how much evil is in the world, our God 
is far, far, far greater and will conquer that evil if we let him. God is telling us he loves us. We have the power to change things. We have the gifts and the talents to change things. We just need to quit complaining and start building. God wants us to fix the world. God wants to fix the world. But first, we must join in marriage with him and follow ourselves and allow ourselves to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Let us all join together in marriage through the blood of Jesus and make a difference. Be love bakers, joy makers, and dream shakers. There is true joy in saying yes to God. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, as members of one family, we give thanks to you and seek your abundant blessings. With faith in your goodness, we offer our needs and our prayers. For the church, during this week of prayer for Christian unity, may we look to Christ to guide us on the path of greater holiness and unity with our brothers and sisters baptized in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, especially of our country, may they find ways to work together and agree on issues that promote the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That inspired by the example of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., all the citizens of the nations may work to end injustice and discrimination everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for all human life, may the efforts of many faith-filled people lead others to recognize God's precious gift of life and defend it in all stages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For couples preparing for marriage, may God guide them in this sacred vocation, and may they be a sign of the love God has for for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for many spiritual gifts God bestows upon us, may we celebrate these gifts from God without jealousy or resentment and seek to use 
what God has given us for the good of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those suffering from cancer or other serious diseases, may God be close to them and grant them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Ellen Herman and Steve Fritz, may the faithful departed share the heavenly banquet with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the Parish Book of Intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you offer us the infinite goodness of life with you. As your beloved disciples, we offer these our prayers and ask that you hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is number 653. We are many parts, 653.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Well, I forgot half my homily, so here we go. I gotta make it up. No, um, I have a special talk to do here today, and it's about marriage. You know, through these common days, we have many, many trials in this world today, and there are new trials with the COVID and, and the masks and everything, and to, to get along with the world. And it seems like that at least with my marriage, it seems like that our goal is to get it to always get better. And it seems like every time we try, something happens in the world to knock it back down. And it really seems like we're just going even. I mean, we're not getting any worse, but we're not getting any better. We're not getting any closer. And it's just the common trials in the world today. And thank the dear Lord, there's been a God sent um, to us that we've been delivered this great program. A retreat is coming, and it's coming on February 19th, and it's going to be at St. Michael's in the church, and it's a married couple retreat. And the title is called Lasting Love, Keeping Your Marriage Strong in Christ. The presenters are the Luminous Mystery Ministries, Car Carol Curvile and Christian Curvile Hug, with husbands Mike Curvile and Derek Hug. The registration will start at 1.30 to 2 o'clock. The retreat will be from 2 to 5, and then the mass will be from 5 to 6, and that will be followed by a candle lit light dinner. Beautiful setting, the meal will be catered in to us. Um, I've seen the menu, it's, it sounds delicious. And it will be down in the gymnasium at St. Michael's in Hicksville. The tickets will be limited and will be sold after masses starting next week. All amazing parish and Christian formation people will be selling those tickets for the price of $50 per couple. Those people that you can see is Carrie Kemple, Deacon Rod, Pat Bowser, Sharon Mesner, Anne Marie Michaels, Mark Gershus, Deb Schroeder, Kathy Kemple, Charlene Schwank, Wilma Stark, Judy Davis, and Denise Connect. Um, I have flyers with me that I can hand out. Um, I'll be in the front of the church there. I also have a couple tickets already, um, so but get your spot reserved. Call Judy Davis, and you can um, reserve your spot, and you can pay at the door. You don't need to worry about the pay right away, but get your spot reserved. And... Just with that, there is a little prayer that I, I, they sent with this, and it really is good. It says, God who is love, and who created us by love, and for love, invites you, 
to see how much you and he together can love your spouse. This is his invitation to you to enhance your sacred romance, complete with mass and a candlelit dinner, treat you and your spouse to a date night designed to strengthen and sustain your marriage through all the moments that make this sacrament both a sacrifice and a sacred blessing. I know that um, I don't always take my wife out on for, th um, for Valentine's Day and everything, but this is an easy way out, and I like it. So I'm, I'm going to use it. <laughs> with that, also, I have one more little thing that doesn't, it's not tied in with that. But we talked about um, our youth and everything, and there's an excellent opportunity on January 30th from 5.30 to 7 o'clock for both parishes to join together in board game night. Yes, board game night. When you can bring your favorite game, no electronics, and join in fun in building our marriage with God. We would love a group of individuals um, to come together, a committee, um, I don't care what you call yourselves, to start planning these events in the churches to, and start helping um, with our youth and everything. Um, but we would really like these committees to form these events. It w would really help us out. I certainly thank you and God bless. Let us pray. Pour on us, O oh Lord, the spirit of your love and in your kindness Make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the Curviles leading that, um, many of you are familiar with them. We've had them for parish mission, and just a few months ago they did the Women's Day Out. So um, just are excellent. So that'll be a great opportunity. A couple other things. So for the school, St. Mary's School here, they're getting ready for their reverse raffle. Um, it's a month or two away. But um, I think they're here. Chase and Amber all are, are here um, selling those tickets for that already. So if you um, are planning to go or want to get your chance in to win money or get out early, I don't know which one it is, you know, with those reverse raffles. But so, so, so that's available. Um, also, a reminder for the youth that the KFC is having their free throw contest today. This afternoon it's at, at, um, at, at Edgerton High School. That's for boys and girls from 9 to 14, so practice up and get ready to see if you can win, win that. And then um, on Thursday of this week, we have faith or uh, adoration through the day and faith on fire in the evening, so that's at 7 o'clock where we have some prayer and uh, witness. J Judy Davis actually is going to give the witness for uh, Thursday, so come to that if you're able. And then finally, um, this Friday, January the 21st, there's a March for Life. So that there's um, the national one in Washington, D.C., so if you're going to that, great. <laughs> uh, otherwise, always in Defiance, they have one there. It starts at noon at the courthouse in downtown Defiance, and then they have some uh, people to lead some prayer and speech and so forth, and march on to St. John's Catholic Church in Defiance there. I saw on the schedule for that for Father Dave Serrata, you know, he's there in Defiance now, that he'll be one of them leading some of those prayers and all of that. So that's... Um, this uh, Friday at noon, um, anybody who can come, you're welcome to join us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our song of sending forth is number 766. O God, beyond all praising, 766. Yeah. 